Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is March 1st, 2021, and we have flipped to yet another new month. Uh, we have one kit announcement that came over the transom literally this morning, otherwise this would have been a really, really abbreviated show. And then we have a few kit uh, releases from overseas, a few things cleaning up the end of uh, Aoshima's. February releases, pretty much. So the new kit announcement that popped up while we were looking at Japanese kit releases, ironically, uh, is going to be a new, well, a semi-new release, if you will. It's a combination of a modified reissue and an old piece of tooling from 1981, sort of swooshed together into a new kit, if you will, uh, from the folks here at Revell in USA. You know, the bankrupt company that doesn't make model kits anymore. Uh, the reason why we found out about this in, from Japan is because Hasegawa uh, had announced it. And Hasegawa, for the uninitiated, is Ravel's importer in Japan. Uh, it's a rather amusing twist of fate, given the fact that when Habaka went under here a few years ago, Hasegawa lost their U.S. importer because Habaka was that thing. Because, remember, I recall Habaka owned both Ravel's and both, uh, you know, U.S. and Europe. Well... When the Habaka bankruptcy took place, and there was, you remember, that three, four-month gap where there just wasn't a Ravel of USA for a little bit, uh, they never lost that distribution deal with the Ravel German company, because that company never ceased operations. It just sort of changed ownerships and went on its happy little way. And so, Hasegawa, therefore, is still Ravel's importer in Japan, even though technically not here. Awkward! But hey, I'm sure Hasegawa makes money out of that deal, and they're happy with that. So that release is going to be, and it says mid-June over there, so what would guess May here, maybe? Or or somewhere thereabouts is this. And this is being called the Ford Bronco Sandman 2. So this is a modified reissue of the 2016 new tool Ford Bronco that we all know and love here in the United States. The new pieces to this are the half cab. You may recall, of course, that your Bronco has always had a cover over the bed, uh, you know, the full-on Bronco uh, body, and this is going to have the half cab that leaves the bed exposed as a pickup truck. That's a newly tooled, or well, newly released. Remember, all tooling is done at one time, so this has been done, it just hasn't been released yet. But newly tooled parts for the half cab um, now makes a bunch of you guys who bought, like, Olsen Brothers stuff have a piece you don't technically need anymore. Whoops, but, alright, build your, your resin half cab so you can <laughs> get this kit. And the Sandman 2 is the dune buggy there in the back. And that kit originally comes from a kit called Mr. Sandman, which was a two-piece kit like this. Or technically three-piece, because the trailer is its own piece, technically. Uh, that used, was came out in 1981, mounted to the uh, snap-tight version of the Chevy uh, C10 pickup truck. So the buggy and the, and the trailer are... Theoretically speaking, snap tight kits. Uh, there's no other details on this in terms of whether or not the trailer will get rubber tires or the dune buggy will get rubber tires. Those were plastic back in 1981. It is a very, very basic uh, sort of kit in itself. The dune buggy is maybe 25 pieces and the trailer is about 10 or so because it was meant to go on a 40 piece or so piece Chevy pickup truck. Uh, but yeah, so that's a little piece of tooling that must exist, you know, they must have found or exist somewhere. Uh, you would think that would be sort of something that would have gotten, like, sold off to Atlantis with all the other, like, odds and ends and scratch and dent, because I can't believe that that dune buggy and trailer were sent to China at any point in time. So, uh, yeah, more proof, of course, again, that they didn't sell every U.S.-based piece of tooling. Or maybe it did. Maybe it's part of the uh, snap-tight Chevy truck tooling, uh, that basically has been reissued as the tow truck the last few releases, and this is just sort of as you know gated off on the other part of the tooling. Uh, it's hard to tell the way these things would have been organized back in the back in the day because the way tooling is done now in the 2020s, 20 teens is completely totally different than the way tooling was taken care of back in the day. Uh, you know the whole adult hobby, collectible, people are willing to pay money for it versus kids' toys, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't think that, uh, as far as I know, this little dune buggy doohickey bobber here has not been out since 1981. So, uh, yeah, that's been lurking somewhere in a warehouse somewhere, and, um, yeah, so now you get it back with a 
uh, the third we have the third release of the Bronco, correct? Right? Because you have the regular Bronco, and then you have that sort of off-road Bronco that looks more like a real Bronco than the factory stock one does. And now you got one with a half gap, so there's that. Um, I'm going to mention this in passing in case any folks who happen to see this are in the Pennsylvania area. Um, I'm not sure how good an idea this is, but we're, we have been given the green light from our venue, so we're going to have this show. Uh, my model club uh, that I normally belong to, even though we haven't had a meeting in over a year, and, and I don't can't go to the meetings anyway because I work on Monday nights, but anyway, the South Hills Modelers Association will be having our uh, 11th annual, 11th annual, because this was supposed to happen last year and it didn't, so we just kept the number the same. Uh, yeah, our model car show and uh, diecast train expo. I don't believe there's better, anyone has ever sold it. Well, no, that's not true. One year we did have some train guys come in, and then they were kind of nonplussed to the fact that there wasn't a train show. But uh, we have a couple of guys who sell diecast, mostly Matchbox Hot Wheels people. But for the most part, it's a model swap meet. And uh, I guess our show theme this year carries over from last year. It was land yachts, so uh, you know, figure that out. Fourteen classes. It's people's choice. It's, we used to call this NNL, NNL style until one of the NNL people called us out on it, and apparently we're not allowed to do that because NNL is a thing and blah blah blah. Actually, we didn't change it because of that. We just didn't like the drama associated with it. And uh, basically, when you come in the door, you get a ballot, you go back to the model contest, you vote on whatever you like, and then it's all tabulated out. We have one award per class, just a first place. And then there's a special theme award for the land yachts. And then the club usually, uh, the members themselves, will usually buy a trophy, give out things like best engine, best paint. Uh, one guy does best Pontiac every year and so on and so forth. So this is going to be Sunday, March 28th, which is the last Sunday of March, um, 9 to 3 at our normal venue, which is the Castle Shannon Volunteer Fire Hall, which is technically Castle Shannon, but Castle Shannon, I guess, has a P Pittsburgh zip code these days. I don't know. The, the zip code organization of Pittsburgh is weird. Some towns have, have their own, and then other places insist on using Pittsburgh, but it's actually in the borough of Castle Shannon, which is about 12 miles south of Pittsburgh, so it's still not in downtown. But yeah, so if you uh, if, you, if you're uh, feeling froggy, you got yourself some vaccines, or just taking a want to take a flyer into the wind of COVID, uh, yeah, apparently that's going to go on. Tables are still available if you want to vend. Um, hmm, yeah, so there's that. Ah, I'm, I'm looking at my graphics here. There's one other thing I wanted to mention. I'm going to mention this last week, but it, I forgot all about it. Uh, Doyoshu is going to be reissuing several of the uh, Nostalgia Heroes kits. Uh, these are. This tooling has changed hands at least three times since it was created back in the 1970s and 1980s. And these are going to be four Nissan-specific releases. Uh, as you look at the graphics here, top left is the 1970 Nissan Fairly Z432, which is a racing uh, homologation version of the Fair Lady. And then you have the 71 Nissan Cedric uh, Hardtop 2000GX. 72 Nissan Skyline uh, Hardtop 2000 GTX, so this is not a GTR, it's the trim level underneath of it. And then the 71 Datsun Bluebird Hardtop uh, 1800 Triple SE. So, these are motorized toys that are unassembled, mo unassembled promotional toy model type things. Um, the tooling is from very early 1980s, possibly the late 1970s. It's very hard to get a... a, a pin down a release specific release date of the actual original version of these kids because again the, they've changed ownerships a few times uh nostalgic heroes is the la or nostalgia heroes is the way these were released the last time about 15 18 years ago and so yeah the the reason i'm mentioning these to you at all other than the fact that that cedric and that bluebird are the only, these kids are the only ways to get them and then yeah they're not the most spectacular things in the world as you might imagine uh, they're going to include the motors. We see a lot of, lot of reissues of old motorized toys, model kits like that. But of course they never have the engines, the actual motors, electric motors in them. These kits are going to come with the electric motors. So if you are so inclined to relive a portion of your youth, and really that portion of your youth has to be overseas someplace, because I don't think these were sold in the United States in any way, uh, even as toys back then. Uh, yeah, those are going to be coming back out, uh, supposedly late March, early April, so, yeah, we'll, I guess, be on the lookout for those. <laughs> More of a warning <laughs> than anything else, though, be on the lookout for those. Uh, so we go over to Japan now for this week's kit releases. These are all uh, Aoshima reissues. Uh, on the straight-up reissue front, you have the 250th anniversary version of the Lamborghini Aventador, as well as its 
PE set. I now am noticing for the first time that this PE set is a universal set for the Super Veloce, or the Veloce, Veloce, Velocitor, whatever, and the 50th anniversary are both in the same sheet. So that's kind of a different twist on it. These were all separate. Actually, I don't think the SV ever had its own uh, photo etch. I believe the photo etch that I have for my SV is a hobby design piece. But uh, yeah, so this will supposedly fit both, and it looks like the, there's enough uh, vents and things like that to cover both uh, versions of it, because this the SV and the 50th anniversary have slightly different front intakes and rear uh, exhaust parts and things like that. And this will come with seatbelt materials and, and the floor mats and all that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, that's uh, back out there, as well as this, which is the uh, Liberty Walk, Liberty Works version 2, uh, or Type 2 version 1, which is the uh, copper bodied version of the uh, Liberty Walk R35. That's buck out there again. And then the these are sort of technically speaking the, the new kits of February, if you will, the ones that are actually specific, specifically linked to February. First up, you have this, the 76 Nissan Skyline 2000 GT XES, the E and the S being two different trim levels. Uh, actually, I think it's the GTE, GTS, GTX. You can build every single trim level that this 76 Skyline came in with this kit. Uh, mostly that's going to be uh, decals and paint uh, scheme differences there. Uh, so that's back out there. Been re was reissued back last year during the summer of Skylines, and then uh, yeah, the one kit that I know a lot of people working were, were were working on, worrying about, waiting on even the the uh, Lamborghini Huracan Performante. So this is finally out in its new uh, supercar boxing. Now it was in a supercar boxing before. You may recall it is uh, kit number twenty-seven of the old series. And now it's kit number 13 of this new series. So this nothing changed in this kit whatsoever. Just it's new boxing. I know there's, again, the reason I say people were waiting on this, there were people who missed this kit the first time it was out, uh, and they didn't do a, basically a background reissue of it. And they just were going to put it into this new series. And it took a little longer than I think anyone expected because of, of course, the COVID. And this uh, also now has its own sort of universal PE set, uh, there was a PE set specific to the Hurricane, and then there's a PE set that's specific to the Hurricane Performante. And this uh, sort of splits the difference, although I think this is now missing, at least the display that I'm showing you here, it's now missing the painted pieces of the PE. I don't know if those are, those are, those are still in it or not, but this claims this is now a universal PE set for both the Hurricane and the Hurricane Performante. Um, you could not use one with the other in the past because of the differences in the... Uh, brakes and the intakes and things like that so i'm guessing this must cover that problem or otherwise it wouldn't be marketed like this it does come with like three sets of exhaust tips here so it should be um good for everybody i think the two round ones at the bottom there are the regular hurricane ones and then the fluted ones if you will up on top the four sets are for the uh, perform the uh, performante I believe, but at any rate, you got the little stickers and the seatbelt material, and there may actually be more than this. This is uh, Aoshima's little promotional photograph, because I could not find anyone who has a photograph of the actual package of this new PE as of yet, so that, guys, like I said, it's going to be a quick one this week, because there isn't a whole heck of a lot going on. Um, two weeks ago, now, it would be Lunar New Year, so, you know, we're waiting for stuff to come in, and it'll be the March releases coming next, the two Ford or not two, well, one's a Ford, one's a Mac. The two AMT Italeri, or Italeri, reboxes, the tractors are not in as of yet. Right now, there's only one kit for March specifically. Uh, we're going to hold the March release show for a couple of days just to see if anything else is added to that release list. Uh, and yeah, then we'll be back with that. So anyway, guys, hope you guys had a great weekend, and we'll see you on the other side. Oh,